Hey there, it's Gary Parrish. Welcome back to the CBS Sports Eye on College Basketball Podcast, where we sometimes discuss camel fighting dough birds and leaky black. Matt Norlander is here with me. If you're watching on YouTube, smash the like button like your Brandon Davies. You have consent. If you haven't yet, subscribe to the CBS Sports College Basketball YouTube channel. Also do that while you're here. Let's get into it. Um, you might remember last summer when we did what we called our summer shoot around, where we published short episodes on 20 different teams, not necessarily the best 20, just 20 programs that we thought were interesting enough uh, to focus on last offseason, plus a bonus episode that we auctioned off with all proceeds going to St. Jude Children's Research Hospital in Memphis. Shouts to Bellarmine. Now we're doing it again. This is year two of the summer shoot around on the Ion College Basketball Podcast. It's going to be 20 predetermined episodes plus a bonus episode over a seven week span, three a week. We'll try to keep them less than 30 minutes each. We're already 0 for 1 in that regard. We'll try to do better. Like last year, we're going to do them in alphabetical order, which means this summer we started with Arizona. Next up, Arkansas. Last season, the Razorbacks finished 22 and 14 overall, 8 and 10 in the SEC, tied for ninth in the league standings. It was the byproduct of a lot of stuff, mostly injuries. The Razorbacks lost in the uh, second game of the SEC tournament, got an eight seed in the NCAA tournament, and they beat Illinois. They beat Bill Selfless, Kansas, and then they lost to UConn 88 65 in the Sweet 16. Uh, Razorback fans understand that UConn did that to everybody in the NCAA tournament, so no reason to feel bad. The top three scores from that team are gone, but Trayvon Brazil is back from injury. Devontae Davis is also returning. And once again, surprise, surprise, Eric Musselman added some good pieces via the transfer portal. I've got Arkansas ranked 11th in the top 25 and 1. We'll see what Norlander thinks about that. I didn't like that facial expression. But first, a word from our partners. When you're the FedEx Cup champion, your name's on this trophy forever. This is our season-long race. This is the sought-after trophy when we tee it up in the first event of the season that you think about. Three tournaments with the world's best golfers battling for the tour's toughest trophy to win, the FedEx Cup. The playoffs begin August 12th on CBS. All right, dead leg. I've got Arkansas mm. as a top 15 team heading into year five from us. Can you dig it or do you despise it? I, neither. I want to find some sort of common ground in the middle of that. 11. See, this is why I like doing the summer shoot around because intentionally I try not to uh, keep up to date with every iteration and update of your offseason top 25 and one. And I didn't realize you had Arkansas 11th. Let's dig into this. Let's dig into this roster situation real quick here. Okay, so Nick Smith Jr. is gone. 12 and a half points a game. First round NBA pick goes to the Nets. Anthony Black, number six overall to the Magic. Uh, 13 points a game, but was a, a great lead guard and wound up stepping up in, in massive ways when Nick Smith obviously had some injury issues last season. Jordan Walsh also left. Uh, we'll see if it works out for him. I thought he had a great chance at a second season in college if he had stayed, but nevertheless, uh, a really good glue guy. And uh, he's gone. He was seven points a game. And then, of course, Ricky Council, the leading scorer of those four, was the only one that did not get drafted. Uh, he was 16 points a game. So when I look at this. You got Devo back. Brazil, I think there's really good. There's a really good ceiling for Brazil again. But I do almost wonder if uh, he was benefited by the players that were around him. So I, I hesitate just a little. GP just a little in thinking that he is going to be able to step back in after uh, his injury last season, his season ending injury and can be that kind of guy. Now I think they're going to ask him if not need him to do that. And by that, I mean, he was averaging 12 a game when he went down, they will need more than that from him. Uh, the, the transfers are coming in. I'll let GP rattle off all the names of the guys that you need to know, because as usual, Arkansas has loaded up in the portal and will look to do this again um, but how do you land on this team, this roster being, you know, essentially a top 15 roster? Cause I, I don't, I don't think that I am there in must we trust. Okay. In must we trust three straight sweet 16s, uh, two elite eights in that span. But I will tell you, um, that I did notice cause I do look at preseason rankings. Arkansas is 28th at barttorvik.com in the preseason. Whether you sort the data or not, that's what you're going to get. 
28th at BartTorvik.com. So how about this? I've got Arkansas 11th in the SEC. I mean, 11th in the country. <laughs> and then this is fascinating as hell if you've got them 11th in the SEC and 11th in the country. <laughs> <laughs> what if it just means more? It's, it, it's been SEC media days this week. I got caught up in it. I just ranked the top 11 and the top 25 and one are all going to be SEC teams. You know what? We might eventually get there. Let's just, let's <laughs> like, if we live point. long enough, we might be doing a summer shoot around where oh, Arkansas is 11th in the SEC and also 11th in the country. If uh, it's up to beautiful. Greg Sankey, that's where we're headed. The, the SEC has everybody. So I've got Arkansas 11th in the country, but first in the SEC. I've got Arkansas as your projected SEC champions. Now, here's what's here's, here's hmm. what's interesting. Torvik has Arkansas seventh in the SEC. I don't know that I've ever been this out of line with a computer in the preseason. The team I have picked to win a league is picked by a computer, a computer I respect, to finish seventh in the league. So that does make me uh, wonder if I might be trusting Muss a little too much. But I like the roster. Devontae Davis is, is proven at this level. Um. Uh, Brazil, yeah, yes, he's coming off an ACL, but he was averaging 11.8 points and six point rebound, 6.0 rebounds last season in nine games before he tore the ACL. Um, so those are two guys that have already, you know, done good things in this program. And then Tremont Mark, uh, I love, I really liked him at he's, Houston. Yeah, he might be the he might be the most important transfer. We'll wait and see. Maybe not from yeah. a scoring. But I, I really like his addition. I yes. like him. Uh, 10.1 points, 4.9 rebounds, 1.8 assists last season at Houston. That was a Houston team that, um, you know, was at the tip top of the sport all season. Khalif Battle from Temple um, averaged 17.9 points, 3.6 rebounds, 1.8 assists last season. It's for a bad team, but I think he's legitimately good. And then I do have questions in the middle if we project Bayfall to – to be the starting center. He's a 6'10 freshman from Senegal. He's 28th in the class of 2023. And so I guess I'd put it this way. I like 80% of that starting lineup, if that is indeed the starting lineup that must settles on. I am concerned about starting a borderline top 30 uh, center, top 30 player in the freshman who happens to play that position, if only because those guys are not usually impactful for teams that are supposed to be top 15 in the country. I went back and looked this up. There's exactly one freshman center who was ranked outside of the top 20 of his class last season who was impactful for a good team. Trivia time. Who was it? All right. So they were freshmen last season and they entered college ranked outside of the top 20 in their recruiting class. And, and th th there's only one guy that I could find. I went to the 24-7 uh, center rankings, class of 2022, went outside of the top 20, because that's where Bayfall is. Are we, yeah, I'm saying Filipowski if he's being designated as a center. But are we calling him a power forward? Filipowski was a top five recruit. Oh, yeah, top, outside the top 20. Excuse me, excuse me, sorry. Um, hmm. Like a top five, top 10 center? Those guys usually are really good. You get outside of the top 20, and it's, uh, it's typically a multi-year thing. Uh... You'll know it as soon as I say really? it. Okay. Yes. Well, I've, uh, Bona was a top 20 recruit, was he not? Adem yes, Bona? He, was, he was. Yes. Yep. Um, I'll notice it. Well, let me just see if I can get it real quick. I got another. I got a trivia time for you as well. Try and keep these things at 20 minutes. This is how we go over. Um, bo 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 hold on. Just give me a he second. He was ranked 73rd in the class of 2022. Um, All right. High major program or not? Yes. Okay. Um... Give me a conference. Big East. All right, now I'm scanning. Uh, who last year? Oh, Klingon. That's right. Donovan Klingon yeah, was, um, you know, he was good. He was meaningful for for UConn, for a UConn team that won the national championship. He was ranked 73rd in his high school class. Year before that, there's really nobody unless you want to call Charles Bidiaco. He was 33rd in the class of 2021, averaged 6.7 points, 4.3 rebounds, and 17.8 minutes per game as a freshman at Alabama. My point is this. Players, not players, centers ranked outside of the top 20 of their high school class are not usually impactful freshmen for good teams. But on some level, Arkansas is going to need Bayfall to do that. Um, he just has to be a piece, a role player, but uh, – People like this don't usually have great freshman seasons at that position. I guess that's the bottom line. 
I'd say Makai Mitchell is also a guy that needs to uh, to make a big jump. He was a seven point per game guy last season. Uh, so him, Devo, Brazil are the big returning guys. They're also bringing back uh, Jalen Graham and Joseph Pinion, who weren't just role players at best. We'll see. And then, yeah, I mean, you know, Jeremiah Davenport, a good addition from Cincinnati. L. Ellis mm-hmm. was 17.7 points a game at Louisville. Bad Louisville team. I think we even mentioned on the show every team every bad team any team's got to have a leading score he was that guy we'll see um and then keon menafield will be a maybe a seven eight nine point per game guy so we'll, we'll see i just i, I want to see how he gels all this you say he must we trust there is something to that though he's 58 years old entering his fifth season with arkansas carries a 95 and 42 record overall 41 and 30 in the sec and has won eight eight ncaa tournament games but here's the deal even predating his Arkansas stuff in eight seasons of division one coaching must has been a coach for eight years at the D one level. He's averaging 25.6 wins per, per year, which leads me to trivia time. Okay. Mm-hmm. Here we go. Mm. There have been eight coaches to average 25.0 or more wins in the past eight seasons. Must is one of them, which means there are seven left. Can you get those seven coaches in eight guesses? We'll see. Bill Self. He is on the list. He is second at 28.5 wins per season the past eight seasons. Mark Few. He is number one and outrageous. 31.4 wins per season the last eight years. 31.4. Few is one. Self is two. You're two for two. Can you get six? No, you need five and six guesses now. Scott Drew. Ain't not on the list. You now need to go five for five. I think it's doable. I don't think you're going to do it. In the last eight how many years? years? Eight, eight, years. eight years. So, for example, you know, guys like Jay Wright's not eligible. He's not coaching anymore. You know, right. uh, I don't. Sean Miller took a year off, so he's not on the list. I don't even know if he would have qualified anyway. But you got to have coached the past eight seasons. I think. I think you go back eight years, you get into some bad Kelvin Sampson years. I, I need to know if you have a Kelvin Sampson. I'm going to say Kelvin Sampson. He is third, 27.4 wins per season. So we have few than self than Sampson. I really need some like Jeopardy music or something like that. Mick Cronin. He is fourth. Let's go. 26.3, the greatest coach in UCLA history. 26.3 wins per season. Did, did John win? I'm. I'm half joking, half serious. Did John wouldn't actually ever average north of 25 wins over eight seasons because they had shorter seasons back then. I'm sure it happened, but now I'm curious. Someone, yeah, I'm not. I'm not certain. And if he did, it was just by luck. Yeah, that's um, true. You need to go three for three. I need to go three for three. I need to go three for. I'd say three. there is definitely an obvious one, a sneaky one, and then another one where you're like, okay, might not have been my guess, but I can definitely see why that's the case. Okay, is this the sneaky one? Randy Bennett. He's the sneaky one. 25.4. Randy is all sneaky one. He's so sneaky. He so saw sneaky. him at Peach Jam. I was sitting with some other coaches. They said, look at that guy over there. He's sneaky. sneaky. I was like, you're sneaky. right. He is. Oh, sneaky Randy Bennett. <laughs> that, that's a new thing. That Golden is. Gate Mike and sneaky Randy Bennett. <laughs> Randy Bennett. That's right. Here we go. <laughs> okay. How many more I got? You need two more. Okay. Damn it. Um, they have faced off in an NCAA tournament in the past one to five years. That does me no good. I never remember I know. who plays in that stupid thing. <laughs> I, in preparing for Arizona, I was like, uh, oh, wow, they lost to Princeton. That's interesting. Uh, come on. <laughs> You've got to be kidding me. <laughs> if you would have asked me who Princeton upset uh, in the first round of the NCAA tournament a week ago, I would not have gotten brutal. that right. Yeah, that's, that's just a damn shame. Hey, hey, hey. hey. I absorb yeah. it. I talk about it. I move on. I, yeah. <laughs> I orbit i talk about it i move on it's like your dinner basically all right anyway continue two more rick barnes not on the list no one has won a national championship oh tony bennett tony bennett 25.6 wins over the past eight seasons do you want the last one or do you want to guess i'm gonna guess but um i would i'll give you one more hint uh would be Absolutely considered one of the 10 best coaches in college basketball. Unquestionably. 10 best coaches in college basketball. Is it Jim Laranega? 
It is not. It is one Matthew Painter at 25.1 wins. God, so to you. recap, the eight coaches to That's average 25.0. That is on you. But you know what? You've always hated Purdue. Um, we've got Muss, Mark Few, Bill Self, Kelvin Sampson, Mick Cronin, Tony Bennett, Randy Bennett, Matt Painter. Uh, Vermont Sean Becker would be in if the school didn't prevent him. Probably would have been in if the school didn't prevent him uh, from scheduling non-con games during the COVID year of 2020-2021. He's just a few wins shy despite only going 10 and five a couple of years ago, but there you have it. So in must we trust, I get it. 11 seems a little lofty for me. The pecking order in the sec certainly is pretty fascinating. Um, we got to get the win total at some point, but I don't want to cut you off. You got other thoughts on the hogs here? No, it's just like you went through most of the reserves, L. Ellis, uh, Ken Minifield, Jeremiah Davenport. They got Chandler Lawson. My little homie from Memphis has transferred to, to Fayetteville. So, um, the, the, it, it honestly, it's going to look a lot like a, a must team, like some guys who have, uh, put up numbers at other places. And now it's his job to bring them all to one place and turn them into a winning basketball team. And I mean this sincerely, I don't know that there's anybody better at doing that or that mm -hmm. there's anybody who has proven to be better at doing that. I'm going to take a bunch of pieces. These guys have never met, but they're older and they they can play and maybe they haven't played for successful programs otherwise, but they're going to come here and be a part of something successful. I, I don't know that anybody has shown themselves to be able to do that uh, better than Musk. And so, yeah, I'm just going to assume he can do it again. You know, he's um, made all three NCAA tournaments that have been played since he became the head coach at Arkansas. Year one, there was no tournament, but he made the last three, three Sweet 16s. And it's three six Sweet 16s after, you know, Arkansas didn't even make a Sweet 16 since 1996 before he got there. Um, it's two elite eights and dating back to Nevada. He's made six straight NCAA tournaments. He's been in four of the past five sweet 16. The guy is as reliable as, as, as basically anybody in, if not absolutely anybody in college basketball. And I don't think this is where that trend stops. Uh, who's going to be the best player? Is it Devo Davis? Is it Trevon Brazil? Is it Tremont Mark? Uh, does Khalif battle via Temple come in and kind of do the Ricky Council thing via Wichita State? I don't know who it is. Uh, someone will have to fill that role. Um, I think Brazil needs to be the best player, but I'm not sure. Uh, we'll we'll have to wait and see how all that develops. On, I will. I, you got a thought? I was just going to say on battle, like I, I I never know what to do with these guys. Like, okay, right. you just put up big numbers for a bad team, or are you legitimately same great? With Ellis, right? Same with Ellis. Yeah, same with L. Ellis. Um, but I, you know. Ba Khalif Battle took eight threes a game last season. He's a high volume shooter mm -hmm. from the perimeter. And over the past two seasons, he has combined to make 37.3% of 7.7 .7 attempts per game. So he's um he's good from 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 uh, the three-point line. And you know, if that can translate uh to 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 the SEC, I, I think he does have a shot to be to be a very good player. Like you mentioned Ricky Council. Ricky Council went from a you know, a, a, a big time player for a not so great team to a big time player for a really good team. I, I it won't shock me if battle does something similar. All right. Regular season win total slash over under. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to, I'm going to give you the schedule. Then I'm going to set the over under, and then you're going to tell me the, the amount. And then I'll give you my number when it's done. Cause I've already predetermined my number. So uh, Arkansas is non-con is not out yet. Uh, school needs to get one more game on the docket remains to be seen. If that's going to be a high major, a buy game, or maybe something in between, but here's what we got. Uh, Gardner Webb, Old Dominion, and UNC Greensboro to open the season. And then Battle for Atlantis is where Arkansas will be this season. They played in Maui last season. They'll go across to the other ocean at uh, the Atlantic. And uh, in that event, uh, even though we don't have the bracket yet, so they will get three teams and some combination of this. But you've got a Memphis top 25 level team, a Michigan team that will probably not be top 25 level, North Carolina. I think that's up for some debate. Northern Iowa, Ben Jacobson has had, you know, he's had a lot of reliability, even if some years are stronger than others. That's a good mid-major program. Stanford in an absolute desperation year under Jared Haas. No one really knows. Texas Tech. Now it starts anew with Grant McCaslin. No one really knows. And then Villanova, which is expected to be a top 25 level team. You throw in Arkansas there. So um, that's the field there. Then they get Duke coming to town in the ACC SEC challenge. Yes. As a reminder, Big Ten no longer has rights uh, or a media deal directly with ESPN. So the ACC Big Ten is no more. Now it is replaced by the ACC SEC Challenge. Arkansas will host Duke. 
I love those mid nineties vibes there. Uh, Oklahoma, a game in Tulsa. I believe that's the second of a two year deal. And then they've got Lipscomb, Abilene Christian and UNC Wilmington. Again, one more game there on the non-con. We don't know who it is, but you'll have three, probably three, maybe two high majors in battle for Atlantis plus Duke and Oklahoma. And then just so you know, we do know the sec rotation. So Arkansas will play these teams twice in league play. Georgia will be better in year two. Kentucky ranked for sure. LSU will be better in year two. Again, year two, meaning their coaching regimes. Missouri will be better in year two. You would think uh, Texas A&M expected to be top 25 level. Now they get to host. Don't have to go on the road against Auburn. That's a benefit. South Carolina. Okay. Tennessee. That's a benefit. Host Vanderbilt. They have to play at Bama. They don't get to host Bama. They play at Florida play at Ole Miss now under Chris Beard and play at Mississippi State, which has made the tournament under Chris Jan. So that being said, I am setting the win total over under at 21.5. You're going over, you're going under regular season only, not SEC tournament here, of course. 21.5 is the number. What is your number, GP? I'm going over in must we trust. I work backwards from 31. Three non-league losses, four conference losses, 31 minus seven. 24. 24, 24 victories heading into the SEC tournament. I'm going to go Arkansas. I'm going to say it, it takes a couple of scrapes in non-con. And then I think the SEC slate is, is plenty challenging. I'm going 20 and 11, 20 and 11. Oh God, you don't believe you don't trust. Musk got, at all. I've got the hogs at 20 and 11. Wait till Musk hears about this. I know it's going to get back to him. I know. I know. But Hey, listen, I'm trying to give you my objective guess here i'm gonna say 20 and 11 thinking that maybe i don't know this but maybe that you can take your objective uh, opinion of shove it straight up your ass you either trust yeah. Musk or you don't you either trust Musk that, or you don't right now happens, say it do I'll you trust Musk or not? In, all, in all sincerity hey listen on this two things one um they did rally and, and got it together in the sec tournament they had a lot like a lot of stumbles and hurdles last season but it was it was bumpy last season so we'll see it's a whole new cast we'll see if it if it works there and you know if this is a if this is a step back year, like if I am right, oh by the way, like if if Arkansas has reached the stage where the step back year is twenty and eleven heading into the SEC tournament, which if that's the case, you're still an NCAA tournament team seeding to be determined, then Muss has gotten your the state of affairs, you know, to a place where frankly I don't even think Arkansas fans would have dreamed it possible five years. So yes, you're much higher. You go twenty four, I go twenty. If Muss wins the SEC and had, takes his shirt off, you have to take your shirt off as well. Oh, man. All right. That's fine. That's the that's deal. The, that's the deal. Hold on. Define. Mm -hmm. We're talking regular season, not not the tournament. We're talking yeah, regular gotta, season. If, if Arkansas is either outright SEC champs or co-champs, Muss will uh, clear, uh, clearly uh, take his shirt off. Yeah, dog, and then you, uh, have, you, yeah, and then you have to take yours off as well. Yeah. You have to take yours off as well. All right. But and your pants. Pants. Are standalone regular season champions or are we counting like a shared deal here? Shared. Okay. Share the championship. You just have to take your shirt off. If they win it outright, it's shirt and pants. That's not happening. You have to take your britches off as well. Is Brit? Do you guys know about britches up in the north? Uh, I'm familiar with the term, but I don't believe it's been used since 1982. Um, Down I will, south, we well, say I'll just say Arkansas has got to finish atop the ledger. It can be shared or outright. And then, sure, I'll take my shirt off just like Musk. But Musk has to do it as well. Now we assume he will. Of course he will. I'm going to forget all about this. It's going to be my Princeton beating Arizona. You can come find me in March if that's the case. You got to take your britches off if it's an outright. Not taking my britches off. <laughs> you might have to take you your take britches them off. <laughs> you might want to take them off. So take who do I want to take my take your britches? I don't want to take your britches off. No, you want to take yours off. I think that's what I think that's what we're heading towards. I here. want to have on as much clothes as I can possibly have on at all times. All right, let's uh, let's wrap. This was like a 21 minute conversation. 22 did all right. Yeah, and most of it was about sneaky Randy Bennett. Yeah, look at sneaky Randy <laughs> Bennett. St. Mary's fans, see if you can get that done with the with the bonus episode. Uh, shouts to Devin Downey. Shouts to Chester, South Carolina. Shouts to Huck. Shouts to Larnell. Shouts to sneaky Randy Bennett. Thank you guys for watching, listening to the Island College Basketball Podcast. If you're not subscribed, please go subscribe anywhere you subscribe to podcasts, including Apple, Spotify. There's more of us than there are of them. That needs to be reflected in the comments. Thank you for doing it. We'll talk to you again real soon. Up next in the Summer Shootaround Series is the Baylor Bears. I thought you were going to have a button to push or something there.
saving it for the next episode. We'll talk to you again real soon. Till then, take care. Bye-bye.